Introduce yourself to the members of the jury and spell your first and your last name. Jarrell Pierre, J-E-R-R-E-L-L-E. And your last name, sir? Pierre, P-I-E-R-R-E. -R -R -E. Okay. And Mr. Pierre, can you tell us how old you are? 27. Uh, can you tell us um, uh, what, what town and what state you grew up in? Florida. All right. And what town in Florida did you grow up in? Belgrade. Do you still live in Belgrade presently? Uh, during the time uh, uh, you were growing, well, let me back up. When did you move away from <coughs> Belgrade? Mm, I was back and forth. All right. And what was the last time? When were you most recently residing in Belgrade? Mm, I don't remember that. Okay. Uh, do you, um, be, uh, from your time in Belgrade, do you, uh, uh, did you come to know an individual by the name of uh, Deontay Thompson? Yes, sir. All right. And how do you know Mr. Thompson? Um, friend from school. Okay. How, how far back does your friendship with uh, Mr. Thompson go? Elementary. Elementary school? Yes. And uh, are you still friendly with him uh, presently? Yes. Okay. Uh, do you keep in touch with him? Yeah, from time to time, yes. Time to time? Yes. Uh, do you know, sir, an individual by the name of uh, Tyrone Crawford? Yes. And, and uh, how is it that you know Mr. Crawford? Since elementary. Since elementary school? Yeah. Did Mr. Crawford grow up in Belgrade? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Uh, you, you, you believe that he did? Yeah. Okay. Um, and the same question with respect to Mr. Crawford. Uh, are you still friendly with him presently? Um, I haven't heard from him in a while. When was the last time you uh, spoke to or saw Mr. Crawford? I don't remember. Uh, do you know, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Pierre, uh, where Mr. Thompson ended up going to school, that is college? Gainesville. Gainesville? Yes, sir. Uh, University of Florida? Yes, sir. And uh, did you go up to see, did you know that he, he, was a, he played football at Florida? Yes. All right. And did you go visit him in Gainesville and watch, go to watch the University of Florida play? Yes. All right. How many games would you say you would get to in a season? I don't remember. Okay. Um, during the time uh, that Mr. Thompson was at the University of Florida, did you ever uh, meet uh, an individual by the name of Aaron Hernandez? No, sir. All right. Do you know who Aaron Hernandez is today? Yes. Okay. Do you, do you see him in the courtroom? Yes. <coughs> Yes. All right. Could you just point to him and indicate an article of clothing that he's wearing? Yes. Uh, is he sitting at council table? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Can you tell us what? It, can you describe something he's wearing? I'm sorry. What's the delay time? Show noted. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Pierre, I want to direct your attention to 2013, um, um, and more specifically in February of 2013. Do you recall? Uh, the Ravens winning the Super Bowl that year? Yes. All right. And uh, were you aware, sir, uh, at the time that Mr. Thompson was a member of the Ravens? Yes. All right. Uh, did you become aware of a party that he was throwing in Belglade to celebrate the, uh, the win by the Ravens? Yes. Okay. Did you, do you remember whether you went to that party? Um, yeah. Um, yes, I went. All right. Uh, uh, do you remember who any who else was at that party? It was a lot of people. All right. Where where was the party held? If you remember, um, Club Twenty One. Club Twenty One. Yeah. Uh, is that a place that you had been to on pr on prior occasions? But in other words, before the party, had you been there before? To that club? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it a place that you were? Pr a very familiar with? A place. Is, is Club 21 a club that you were very familiar with? No. Uh, Mr. Pierre, uh, back in uh, February of 2013, did you uh, have a cell phone? Yes. Okay, do you currently own a cell phone? Yes.
approach the witness, Your Honor. Uh, just the highlighted uh, portion there. Do you recognize uh, that, that cell phone number, Mr. Pierre? I don't remember it. Okay. Um, when you say you don't remember it, do you recognize it at all? No, nah, I changed my number a lot, sir. So okay. So I want to remember. Okay. Mr. Pierre, do you remember um, back in January of 2014 um, getting into a uh, car accident? Car accident. I'll see you inside, Mark. Approach the witness, Your Honor. You may. Mr. Pierre, I'm just going to ask you to take a look at uh, what I've circled there in red. Uh, do you see your name? Yeah. All right. And does that refresh your memory um, uh, as to the cell phone number that you had? at least uh, back in January or around the time of January 2014? I mean, it's on the paper, but it don't Objection. refresh my memory. Uh, all right, the question is, seeing that now, does that now cause you to remember your phone number? No, sir. Mm -hmm. The first thing you mm -hmm. may. Do you recognize, um, referring you to the highlighted portion of that document, do you recognize your name in that document, Mr. Pierre? Yes, sir. Okay. And there's a telephone number as well? Yes, sir. Does that refresh your memory of what your telephone number was back around the time of 2013? It's the same number, sir, but it's not going to refresh my memory. Okay. Uh, it, it's the same number on, on both oh, the things that I've shown you. Objection. The witness says it doesn't refresh it. <clears throat> Overrule this to that question. Is, it, is, the, is the number that appears, I understand you're saying it doesn't refresh your memory, but is the number that appears both the same number? Objection here, sir. <clears throat> Overruled. You may answer. <coughs> it don't refresh my memory, sir. I'm sorry? It don't refresh my memory. I, I understand that. That's not my question. My question is on the two pieces of paper that I've shown to you. Yes, sir. Are the telephone numbers the same on each one? Objection. Hearsay, relevance. Uh, well, let me be answered definition. yes or no without going into the content. Yes. Okay. Mr. Pierre, uh, that's the first piece of paper I showed you. Uh, is the number on that piece of paper the same as the number on the other two? Objection. Yes. Relevance. Overruled. Yes. It is. Now, Mr. Pierre, uh, uh, 
uh, at least among some of your friends, were, did some of your friends call you JP? Did they call me JP? I'm sorry? My name is Jarrell. I understand that. Uh, did any of your friends ever call you JP? Yes. Okay. Um, showing you page eight um, of what's been admitted as exhibit number 251 in this case. <clears throat> Can you see that in front of you, uh, Mr. Pierre? Yes. Okay. And do you see? Do you see on line 115 the name JPD? Yes. Okay. And do you see the number? in the uh, the number I circled in the second to last column? Yes. Okay. Uh, that number that I've circled, is that the same number that appears yes. on those three pieces of paper? Yes. Okay. Um, does that refresh your memory at all as to what your cell phone number was back in early 2013 to 2014? No, it's not. Um, who do you remember, uh, Mr. Pierre, being at the Super Bowl party that Mr. Thompson threw at Club 21? Who do, who do I remember? Who do you remember being there? There was a lot of people there, so. All right. Uh, was, was Mr. Crawford there? Jackson Lee. Sustained. Not that I remember. Were any of the people that we mentioned thus far there? Deontay was there. It was his party. Mr. Thompson was there? Yeah. What about what about Mr. Crawford? I know him I'm saying. Okay. Do you know an individual by the name of Max Brown? Yes. Okay. Do you know do you remember whether Mr. Brown was present at the party? I don't remember. You know? Uh, what about uh, Mr. Hernandez? Did you see Mr. Hernandez at the party? Yes. Uh, Do you remember whether that was the first time you ever met Mr. Hernandez? Yeah. Do you remember how it was that you were introduced to him? From um, to Deontay. Through Mr. Thompson? Thank you, Mr. Thompson. All right. Uh, did you have any conversation with Mr. Hernandez that night? I just spoke, I think, I think I just spoke to him, that's it. I'm sorry? I think I just spoke to him. Spoke to him? And, and, and how, how long did you speak to him, if you can remember? <coughs> I don't remember. All right. Uh, after that night, uh, after the, the Super Bowl party at Club 21, do you remember ever having any other contact with Mr. Hernandez, whether it was in person or any other way? No. All right. Did you ever meet him again? Meaning, did you ever uh, socialize with him again? Objection to relevance, no time frame here. Uh, Sustained as to the form of the question. At, at any time after the Super Bowl party at Club 21, did you ever socialize with Mr. Hernandez? Objection. Uh, I don't remember. No, the objection is over. The answer is you don't recall. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Pierre, uh, in the several days after the uh, Super Bowl party at Club 21, uh, do you remember um, any of the activities that you were engaged in? No. 
not not think of. Like, is it your testimony that in the days after the Super Bowl party at Club 21 that you have no memory of what you did at all? I mean, like, I've been in a, I've been in hospitalized like two times, sir. So it's like my memory is not good. You okay. Know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, so well, let's talk about the hospitalization. When when did that take place? It's like. The same year. The same year? Yeah. Um, the same year as the Super Bowl party? Yeah, the same year. All right. Uh, when in relation to the Super Bowl party, can you be more specific? If the, if, if the Super Bowl party was in February, when was it that you remember being hospitalized? I, I know it was after. Afterwards? Yeah. And do you, remember, do you remember the reason that you were hospitalized? From being shot. From being shot? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and is there anything that uh, might refresh your memory as to when that took place? Were you taken to the hospital as a result know. of being shot? Of course. All right. Uh, do you remember whether the police became involved? Just yes or no? Just yes or no? Jackson. Uh, to relevance that should have to do with Mr. Hernandez. Showing you, uh, page from exhibit number 251. <clears throat> Do you recognize, uh, for the record, this is line number nine. Do you recognize the text message uh, that's in the right column? Do I recognize it? Well, let's look first. You see the date? Yeah. April 1, 2013? Yeah. All right. And uh, back over here, uh, would you agree with that with me that that number is the same number that's on all the pieces of paper that I gave to you? Yes. Okay. And do you recognize the text message that's highlighted? I mean, I read it, but I don't recognize it. All right. Does that at all refresh your memory as to when you were shot? No, sir. Okay. So your best memory, uh, Mr. Pierre, is that you were shot sometime in 2013? Yes. And that it was sometime after the Super Bowl party? Yes, sir. Now, uh, at some point uh, after the Super Bowl party, just yes or no, uh, do you, within within and I'm going to limit it to within the five days after the Super Bowl party. Okay, uh, do you remember going to a place called Tootsie's? I don't recall that, sir. All right. Uh, have you ever heard of Tootsie's? Yes. All right. And what is Tootsie's? It's a club. Club. And uh, what kind of a club is it? A strip club. Strip club. Uh, do you know where it's located? In Miami, I guess. You guess? Um, have you ever been there before? I don't remember being there. Okay. So, are you saying you don't remember whether you've been there or you've never been there? I mean, like recently I've been there, yeah. Well, I'm, what I'm asking you is ever. So, this, this includes way back yes. when? Now. Yes. So, you have been to Tootsie's in the past? Just recently. Recently, yeah, and, and was it recently for the very first time? Um, no. All right. Well, to your best memory, when it, when was the first time you went to Tootsie's? Not the exact. I don't remember. You don't remember. Uh, and how many times would you say you've been to Tootsie's? I don't remember. 
And is your testimony that you don't recall being at Tootsie's in the several days, the five days uh, after Mr. Thompson's Super Bowl party, or that you did not go to Tootsie's in the five days after Mr. Thompson's Super Bowl party? I don't recall. You don't recall whether you went? Yes, sir. Does that mean it's possible mm -hmm. that you went? I mean, it's sustained. No. Mr. Pierre, uh, do you remember, uh, strike that, do you know uh, when Mr. Thompson's birthday is? Do I know his birthday? Yes. Yes. Okay. And what's his birthday? It's February 14th. All right. Uh, Valentine's Valentine. Day? Yeah. All right. Now, uh, do you remember uh, being with Mr. Thompson um, and his girlfriend uh, on his birthday in Miami? It was his birthday, yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, tell us where you were, if you can remember, in Miami with Mr. Thompson and his girlfriend. Miami, I think, sir. Do you remember where specifically? In other words, were you at a restaurant? Were you at a club? Were you at the library? Fountain Blue, I think, sir. Fountain Blue? Yes, sir. Is the Fountain Blue... Uh, what is what is the Fountain Blue? It's like a... Uh, I'm sorry? It's a hotel. It's a hotel? Yeah. All right. And uh, what were you, Mr. Thompson, and his girlfriend doing at the Fountain Blue? I don't remember. All right. Uh, do you remember whether there was anyone else other than Mr. Thompson and his girlfriend and yourself? I don't remember. Uh, directing your attention to the night before you, Mr. Thompson and his girlfriend were at the Fountain Blue, or uh, actually the two nights before. Do you remember what you were doing on either one of those two nights? I don't remember. You don't remember at all, not I one single thing? I don't remember, sir. I'm showing you what's been admitted as exhibit number 291A. Do uh, you recognize uh, a picture of yourself in that? Yes, sir. And what position are you in? Um, you see the numbers below each of the pictures? Yes. Okay. And which which number position are you in? Uh, objection, Your Honor. You stipulate that he is himself. I don't see the relevance of this. Uh, overruled. Number three. Number three? Mm -hmm. Mr. Pierre, do you have any memory of being um, uh, in, a, in an SUV with a number of other individuals um, at the home of your uh, uh, baby's mother uh, in the two days before you were <coughs> at the Fountain Blue in Miami with Mr. Thompson and his girlfriend? I don't recall that, sir. Uh, do you have any memory of being with Mr. Hernandez in the two days leading up to when you were at the Fountain Blue in Miami with Mr. Thompson and his girlfriend? I don't recall that, sir. Um, is there anything that you can tell us about the 48 hours before you were at the Fountain Blue that you can remember doing? Anything at all? No, sir. Do you, did you, 
have any communication with Mr. Hernandez uh, in the month of February or March or April of 2013 that you can remember? And when I say communication, I mean in person, by telephone, text message, email, Instagram, any, any, any communication at all. The only thing I remember is at the club that night. At the club that night? Yeah, the at Super Bowl. The Super Bowl party. Yeah. That's the only time you remember having any communication That's with him? That's the only thing, the only time I remember. That's the only thing you remember? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, do you remember what kind of car you were driving in February of 2013? No, sir. Do you drive a car now, or do you own a car now? Yeah, I drive a car, sir. What kind of car do you drive now? A Jaguar. A Jaguar? Yes, sir. And how long have you had that vehicle? I don't know. I don't know how many years. I'm sorry? A couple of years. A couple of years? Yeah. What was the car that you owned before you owned the Jaguar? <clears throat> Uh, Honda Accord. Honda Accord. And how long did you have that car? Um, I can't remember. Okay. Would you say it was more than two years or less than two years? Any less. Less? Yeah. All right. Do you remember the car that you owned before you owned the Honda? A Buick. A Buick? I think so. Okay. What kind of what kind of Buick? What model? 1999. All right. Do you remember the name of the model, like a Buick LeSabre or? Uh, LeSabre. It was a LeSabre? Yes, sir. Okay. Lucky guess, I guess. Um, uh, did you drive any other cars, whether you owned them or not, during that time period, that is, within the last five years? Can you think of any other cars that you've driven other than the two, the three that you just mentioned? No, sir. Um, your baby's mother, what kind of a car was she driving? Or has she driven? Over. Well, first of all, let me let me back up. Does does your baby's mother have a car now? No, she has. How does whether it's baby's <laughs> mother have a car <laughs> marginally relevant to any issue in this case right now? Let's see. Baby mama, she. Does she own or drive a car now? Yes. Okay, what kind? A uh Honda. -huh. Honda. Uh, and do you know what kind of car she owned or drove before that? I don't remember, sir. In the 48 hours before you were at the Fountain Blue Hotel with Mr. Thompson and his girlfriend in 2013, you don't remember whether you were in a vehicle or not at any time in that 48 hour period? Actually, that's an answer three times. Yes. Indeed. Thank you, Mr. Pierre. You need cross-examination. No, Your Honor, no questions. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Please watch your step.
You shall give this court and jury. In the issue now pending between the Commonwealth and the defendant at the bar, shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Help you, God. I Thank you. Please follow the officer. Why don't you step out and see if I get it? Mr. Lee. Thank you. If you wouldn't mind, could you just uh, introduce yourself to the members of the jury and if you could please spell your last name? Hi, my name is Elizabeth Lancaster, L-A-N-C-A-S-T-E-R. And uh, Ms. Lancaster, can you tell us uh, what kind of work that you do? I am a crime scene investigator for the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been uh, working for the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office? For uh, almost 17 years, since May of 2000. And have you been working uh, in your capacity as the crime scene investigator the entire time you've been uh, with the department? Yes, I have. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your responsibilities as a crime scene investigator um, with the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department? I respond to the crime scene, of course, or I document the scene with photographs, handwritten notes. I um, collect the evidence, process the evidence, and store it in our evidence unit. Uh, and have your responsibilities changed much uh, in the 17 years uh, since you've been uh, with the uh, Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office? No. Uh, when you say process evidence, what do you mean by that? I uh, process for fingerprints, swab for DNA. Uh, when you and when you say you process for fingerprints, uh, what do you specifically mean by that? that I'm using black powder, trying to find ridge detail on the evidence, of course. Do you then take the further step of making comparisons to known fingerprints? No, I do not. Once you've processed a fingerprint, uh, who, to whose attention do you send that? I send it to our latent print unit. Uh, and the same for the DNA. Uh, in addition to swabbing for DNA, do you do anything further with respect to DNA testing or comparison? No, I do not. Where do you forward what you swab for DNA? That will go to our forensic biology unit. Uh, Ms. Lancaster, can you tell us a little bit about your formal education, starting with any degrees that you've uh, received um, in your, uh, as part of your work? I have a uh, bachelor's degree in public management. I have a public administration. I have a master's degree in management, and I'm currently working on my master's in criminal justice. I also, uh, through my years as, at the sheriff's office, have training in numerous forensic courses, different courses such as fingerprinting, crime scene investigation, crime scene processing techniques, evidence collection, um, DNA. And those trainings, uh, are those conducted by the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office uh, or do you have outside training as well? I have both. Uh, are you, uh, do you engage in any proficiency testing as part of the work that you do? I do, yes, because we are ISO accredited. Uh, and, and when you say we, are you talking about the entire crime lab or just your, uh, just the crime scene response unit? No, it's the entire crime lab. Uh, Ms. Lancaster, I want to direct your attention uh, to uh, the early morning hours of uh, February 13th, 2013. Uh, were you working on that date? I was, yes. Uh, and uh, back in February of 2000, 2013 at least, uh, what hours did you typically work? I worked six to four. Six in the morning till four in the afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> Did there come a time um, at around 7, 4, 15 in the morning when you got notified of an incident? I did, yes, by our dispatch unit. All right, and uh, what information did you receive? The only thing that I was told was there was a shooting in, <coughs> in the city of Riviera Beach, which is also part of Palm Beach County. Uh, and uh, did you respond to that, to the location where the alleged shooting took place? I did, yes. Now. Uh, Typically, when you respond to a scene such as this, would you go by yourself or with other members of your unit? It depends on the case. This one I went by myself. Uh, and do you recall the location or the general location where you went? Yes. And where was that? That was at 3715 Fiscal Court in <coughs> Riviera Beach. I'm sorry, you have to repeat that. 
3715 fiscal court in Riviera Beach. And uh, could you describe the general area for us? What kind of an area is 3715 fiscal way? It looked to be an industrial park. When you arrived um, at that location, uh, what can you tell us what you saw? Well, when I first arrived, I met with the deputy that was in the front of the, the building at 3715. And then he directed me to the rear, or what I would call the rear, the north side of the building. It looked like a loading dock area with a parking lot. Uh, and uh, um, in addition to the deputy that uh, directed you to, to the rear of the building, uh, did you see any other police personnel there? There was the detective, Detective Smith, and Detective Frank. And uh, what is Detective Smith's first name? Kenny. And uh, what about Detective Frank's first name? Her name, well. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Tina. Tina, okay. Uh, Just ask you to take a few uh, seconds to look at those pictures, Ms. Lancaster. And uh, do you recognize those pictures? Yes, I do. Okay. And is it fair to say that those are various pictures taken from the perspective of uh, the roadway looking towards generally the northeast uh, corner or the northeast section um, of 3715 Fiscal Way? Yes, it is. All right. And are those fair and accurate representations um, of the area behind 3715 um, as well as the area around the northeast corner of that building? Yes, it is. Uh, Your Honor, at this time I'd offer those as the, ne as the next number of exhibits, perhaps with uh, letters designating them after. Those being how many? I think five, Your Honor. Just to count. Actually, four, Your Honor. <laughs> Ms. Lancaster, is the monitor in front of you working? Or do you see a screen up there and now a picture? Yes. Okay. Uh, showing you what's been marked as exhibit number 321, uh, do you recognize that? Yes. All right, and is the northeast corner of uh, 3715 visible in that photograph? Yes. All right, your screen is a, um, uh, is a uh, actually will allow you to point with your finger. Can you just point to the northeast corner of that building? It's going to be over here. Is that the northeast corner? Yes. All right. Oh, you know what? Your screen's too far away from you. So, but is that that that's northeast corner of the building? Yes. And and uh, is there any significance to the northeast corner of that building? Well, I took I took measurements off of that northeast corner, but I went back. Okay. To, so to you around here. Got it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and. Showing you 322, that's a photograph that's taken uh, <coughs> west 
of that corner is that correct yes okay so uh, from in terms of the photograph it would be to the right of the uh, northeast northeast corner but uh, in a westerly direction correct yes and showing you 323 that's even further west correct now uh, you see the uh, yellow tape that's up in um, that's uh, <coughs> runs through the middle of exhibit number 323 do you recognize that that's the um, crime scene tape to and restrict what, access. I'm sorry? That's the crime scene tape restricting access to the area. And was that tape up when you arrived um, at, uh, at 3715 on uh, February 13th? Yes, it was. Ms. Lancaster, do you recognize uh, those pictures I've sent, uh, handed to you? Yes, I do. And is it fair to say that those are three pictures uh, taken from the perspective of 3715 uh, looking north? that is with your back to the northeast corner of 3715 and now looking in a north direction towards the towards the roadway yes it is and are those three pictures fair and accurate representations of that viewpoint generally speaking uh, taken from the northeast corner of the building looking outward yes All right. uh, your honor at this time I'd offer those as the next three exhibits no, they will be received Showing you what's been marked as 326, Ms. Lancaster. Uh, in the uh, upper portion of that photograph where I've drawn the circle, do you recognize what I've circled? Yes. And what is that? That's my uh, north stanchion. <coughs> that, uh, the you, north stanchion. Stanchion. And stanchion is what you call that yellow thing? Yes. All right. And that's just simply a, an indicator that that's, that's north. Correct. Direction-wise. Uh, do you see uh, the the white item that's on the ground that I've just drawn a parallel line toward with? Yes. What is that? That's uh, my tape measure. And what is the purpose of that tape measure? That is, what is it measuring? That was measuring from the northeast corner out to the telephone pole and the edge of the road. <laughs> and the uh, do you see the yellow tape? Yes. That follows the line that I just drew? Yes. Okay. And was that there when you arrived? Yes, it was. <clears throat> when you got to uh, the, the, the scene or the location, uh, was uh, the alleged victim in the case uh, present at the scene? No. And uh, typically when you arrive at a scene like this, who do you speak to first? At this one, I spoke to the deputy first. He was the first one that I met when I was arrived on scene. And uh, just mm -hmm. yes or no, uh, in speaking with the deputy, did you receive some information from him or her? Just other than what I stated earlier. Okay. Uh, at some point, did you? What did you do when you got there and had your conversation or discussion with the deputy? Then I went back and 
went with this Detective Smith at that point and we assessed the scene area so I could see what was possible evidentiary value. And then I started my investigation with photographs and my handwritten notes. Then um, I marked pieces of evidence that I thought might be relevant to the case and then I photographed again. And then I collected those pieces of evidence. How did you arrive at what, uh, at determining what things might be of evidentiary value and what things might be collected in connection with the case? I was just, I just looked at some of the items there that like some had some BLS, which is blood-like substance or blood-like stain. That would be relevant. And there was a bottle, a Gatorade bottle. I didn't know if it was relevant, but I collected it. A baseball cap. I, there again, I didn't know if it had been there before, but I collected it. And uh, so you, you mentioned a bottle, a baseball cap, some um, a BLS or blood-like substance. Where did you where did you uh, note the blood-like substance? There was two areas. There was an area close to a fence that ran along the east side of the building, and in the vegetation, there was an area of vegetation along the parking lot, and in between in between the parking lot and the fence, there was a large pooling area there and then in the parking lot itself on the asphalt there were a couple of areas. Um, in addition to the two areas of BLS, uh, the bottle, the Gatorade bottle, the hat, um, did you notice any other things that were, uh, that, that you took note of? Um, I did find a spent shell casing and in, where, in that vegetation area. In the vegetation area. <laughs> and when was that, where was that generally in relation to where the hat was located? It was just west of the hat. Now, before you uh, noted these pieces of evidence and before you actually went to collect those pieces of evidence, did you have, and again, just yes or no, did you have some narrative of what was alleged to have taken place? The only thing that I had was a shooting had taken place. Just a shooting had taken that's, place. That's it. And is it your responsibility to arrive at a scene and interview witnesses to uh, the alleged incident? No. And you didn't interview anyone uh, on that morning? No, I did not. Showing you those uh, three pictures, uh, Ms. Lancaster, do you recognize those? Yes, I do. All right. And uh, are those generally uh, photographs of the area around uh, the, uh, the vegetation where you collected the red baseball hat um, at various distances, meaning some of them are a little more zoomed in. Uh, there's another one that's a little, a little bit further away. Yes, they are. And do those photographs fairly and accurately represent the location of the hat um, before you collected that item on uh, February 13th of 2013? It does, yes. And does it also reflect the placing of certain cones or markers to indicate the presence of uh, individual pieces of evidence? Yes. Uh, Your Honor, at this time I'd offer that as the next, uh, next no, three exhibits. No, three separate photos? Uh, three separate, yes. Without objection. Showing you exhibit number 328. Uh, 
do you see uh, in exhibit number 328 the stanchion that's uh, in the far left uh, with the number two on it? I do, yes. And what is that marking? The It's marking the bottle that's on the other side. Okay, and that's not visible in the picture, correct? Correct. Okay. And showing you now the arrow drawn to the orange cone uh, in the upper middle portion of the uh, picture, what's that marking? That's the baseball cap. All right. And that cone, does that have a number uh, that's that's might not be, it's a little bit visible in that picture, but do you remember the number of that cone? Uh, looks like number two. Okay. And do you see <coughs> that stanchion? Yes. What is that marking? That's the spent shell casing. All right. And uh, I realize you can't see it, but do you remember whether what number that stanchion had? A uh, number one. And lastly, this cone, uh, do you know what that is marking? I believe it was a piece of paper. Ms. Lancaster, those four photographs I've uh, handed to you, uh, do you recognize those? Yes. Okay. And those are uh, pictures of various pieces of evidence that you collected, inc including uh, the Gatorade bottle, uh, the cartridge casing, uh, and the BLS, both in the asphalt uh, in the parking lot as well as in the grassy area, as well as some additional BLS on some what appears to be some PVC piping. Is that correct? I just photographed the, the PVC pipe. I didn't. I'm sorry. Uh, but those four photographs represent those items that you described earlier? Yes. And are those fair and accurate representations of those items of, that, of evidence as they appeared on February 13th of 2013? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, I'd offer those as the next four. We have no objection to anything, Your Honor. They're received. <laughs> <coughs> With respect to uh, <coughs> exhibit number 333, did you collect that item? Yes, I did. And that's the shell casing, the cartridge casing? Yes. Uh, what did you do, if anything, with the item when you collected it, after you collected it? I took it back to headquarters where I processed it for fingerprints with black powder and I swabbed it for DNA. Uh, as far as the black powder is concerned, uh, did uh, your treatment of that item yield any uh, ridge detail that you could observe? No. What did you do with the swabbing that you took uh, from uh, the cartridge casing. I packaged it in coin envelopes and then in an evidence bag and then I turned it over to our forensic or evidence unit. And when you say coin envelope, is that a paper envelope? Yes. <coughs> Showing you exhibit number 334. Does that show the BLS in the uh, in the vegetation as well as the BLS on uh, the, the what appears to be PVC piping? 
Uh, yes. Vegetation and then the PVC piping. Uh, the BLS on the PVC piping, did you collect any of that? No, I just photographed it. And did you collect any of the blood in the vegetation? I did, yes. And by what means did you do that? I used two oh. sterile swabs. It was still wet and just swabbed an area of it. And again, put it in an envelope evidence bag and took it back with me to headquarters. Uh, what did you do, if anything, with those swabs? They were turned over to our evidence unit, who in t which in turn goes to our forensic biology unit. Did you, perform, did you personally perform any testing on those items? No, I did not. In showing you uh, exhibit number 332, uh, the BLS in the asphalt, did you collect any of that? Or, I did. Or representative sample from I that? did, yes. And uh, uh, was that the same way you did the other BLS, that is by swab? Correct, yes. And what did you do with that? That also was turned over to our evidence unit to go to our forensic biology unit. Did you perform any specific testing with respect to those swabs that you took from the BLS and the asphalt? No. Thank you, uh, Ms. Lancaster. Hi, Ms. Lancaster. Thank you. Hi, Ms. Lancaster. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Uh, my name is Linda Kenny Bond, and I'm going to be cross-examining you, okay? Okay. All right. I have just a few questions for you. Uh, we won't go through all these pictures because the jury's seen them. But uh, when you swabbed the uh, cartridge for DNA uh, and processed the cartridge, I noticed in your, that you said that you were, when you were collecting all the blood-like substances at the scene and all, you changed gloves. Correct. Why is that? Could you tell the jury? So that you prevent cross-contamination. Okay, and you didn't wash off the cartridge, right? No. All right, and why is that? Because that would be contaminating the evidence. Okay, so you were very careful when you took that D the cartridge in because you knew you were going to process it for fingerprints and it was going to go for DNA, right? Correct. And you, you did everything you could to make sure it was not contaminated, right? Correct. Now, you know that the results of the DNA, don't you? No, I don't get those results. You were not made aware of the results of the DNA? No, I am not. Okay. Uh, so then I gather it's fair to say you have no information that would connect that shell casing, that cartridge, to Mr. Aaron Hernandez? No, I do not. Okay. Now, uh, when you were at the scene, when you first got called on, on February 13th at 714, you finished at 945, right? Correct. Okay. Now, Mr. Lee showed you a number of photographs. Okay. A lot of photographs. Oh, there they are. There's the rest of them. And I'm going to put on the uh, Elmo 321. Okay, you see that? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, when you were discussing the crime scene tape was placed that was placed at the scene here because you wanted to preserve what you thought based on the communications you had received uh, was important, was any crime scene pl tape placed beyond that corner here? I think that was in the front where the deputy was in the front. Okay, so it's on the other side of the building. Correct. Okay, but. You don't see any crime scene tape down here, do you? I don't see it in that photo, no. And you didn't place any crime scene tape down, down that alley, did you? No. And you didn't place any crime scene tape down the, the little alley street that goes in front of that building, correct? No, because I don't do that. Okay. Uh, because your narrative did not include securing that area of the location where around the shooting, correct? Correct. Okay. So if there was any specific evidence related to the shooting that was down here or to the front of that building, you wouldn't know because you didn't process that area. And I was not made aware of that. Right. Right. I Correct. understand that. that, that that's, we understand that. Okay. Now, you did process and Mr. Lee showed you the dumpster picture, right? 
322? Yes. Okay. Now, the scene tape, is that um, to indicate that it's beyond the dumpster this way or that way? It's going to the east. Okay. Could you just draw a little arrow that way? Oh, I don't know if that I, I know. <laughs> I believe you're having better luck than I have with this then. Okay. So, um, you didn't process anything in that dumpster, did you? No. As a matter of fact, you, as far as you're aware, nothing was even searched in that dumpster, right? As far as I know, no. Okay. Now, you were very careful because you were told this is where the, uh, the victim had uh, been shot in the area around 327, right? I, I don't know where the victim was shot. I do not was know. just okay. directed to the blood like substance okay. there. Okay. Um, but you did take photographs, close up photographs of that area, correct? Yes. All right. And let's see. We can. Okay. Now here's James. Okay. You know how we're looking at with this thing. We want to enlarge this and zoom in. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Okay, let, it's not zooming, but let me let me ask you without it zooming. Okay, <clears throat> when you took pictures of three twenty seven, as you show in three twenty seven, okay, and exhibit three twenty eight, you actually also took close up pictures of that area, correct? Council, you just put three twenty eight on. Yes. Well, you've now frozen the screen on 327. Yeah, we're not clear. It's not on this. It's not, it's, not, it's not frozen, but the clear is not working in it. There you go. There you go. Okay. All right, this is 328. Now, you saw the hat, right? Yes. You saw the uh, spent cartridge, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, the bottle, the Gatorade bottle, was actually over to the right beyond the parking area, right? It was west west of the, the hat. And west the Gatorade bottle side. looked pretty old, the, the Gatorade in it, correct? I don't know. I couldn't tell. It had liquid, but I don't know how old it was. Okay. But you also processed that for DNA, correct? I did, yes. And you weren't made aware of any DNA they came back to Mr. Aaron Hernandez, correct? Correct. All right. As a matter of fact, you don't even know the results of the DNA. Correct. Okay. Now, when you looked at the uh, location where you saw the blood on the fence, see that? Yes. Okay. Go back out. Did you see any blood going up the fence as if somebody had grabbed onto that fence and pulled themselves up? Sure. Uh, no, over. Uh, no, I did not. And as a matter of fact, you were very careful, so if you had, you would have <coughs> taken note of that, correct? Yes. All right. And did you see anything uh, in the area of the leaves, uh, of a rolling pattern of blood, as if somebody had rolled over? No, it was. Uh, no, overhurled. It was. It was just like a, on top and then a little pooling underneath. Okay. And if you had seen that rolling, you would have documented it, correct? Correct. Right. And um, as a matter of fact, the the leaves that were there were pretty much undisturbed, weren't they? They appeared to be yes. Yes. And you did document a couple pieces of paper that you saw, right? Yes, I did. And the paper was pretty, had a couple of blood-like substances, but it was pretty much undisturbed also, correct? Correct. Uh, you didn't find any broken twigs? No. Broken tree limbs? Not that I saw. Okay. And if you had seen anything that showed that that substance, that area had been uh, trampled on in any way, you would have noted that? Yes. Okay. And you didn't see that? No. Okay. Let's hold on, Ms. Lancaster. Mm -hmm. Have you out of here, please? Right, thank you, Ms. Lancaster. I have nothing further. Anything further, Mr. Lee? Just two questions. 
Uh, Ms. Lancaster, uh, was there any DNA testing done in this case that you're aware of? I'm not aware, no. And uh, lastly, the, with respect to the question Ms. Kenny Bodden asked you about, uh, uh, what did it appear that somebody may have held on to the fence? You're not suggesting that that didn't happen, are you? No. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Will you may shut down, please watch your step. Don't I have one, one question? Oh, right there. And I'll just stay right there. Uh, Ms. Lee, if you saw any blood going up that fence, that you would have documented that, correct? Yes, I would have. So if you saw anything that indicated blood had been put up on that fence by somebody's hand, that would have documented that. Correct? Yes, I would have. Thank you. You may now step down. Thank you. I'm going to call Detective Ken Smith. pending between the Commonwealth and the defendant at the bar for the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth off your guard? Yes, sir. I do, sir. Watch your step. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Hayden. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Would you please introduce yourself to the ladies and gentlemen of the jury and spell your last name for the record? My name is Kenny William Smith, S-M-I-T-H. What is your current employment, sir? Currently work for the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office in South Florida. How long have you worked for the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department? Just shy of 17 years. During that 17 years, sir, can you tell what um, particular specialized units you've been assigned to? I started out on road patrol, did a year as an FTO, which is a field training officer. Then I was promoted into the Violent Crimes Division Homicide Unit in 2005. How many years were you in the Violent Crimes Homicide Unit um, for Beach County Sheriff's Department? For 11 years. I left in July of last year. And where are you currently assigned, sir? Currently uh, assigned to the Homeland Security Division, Airport Division. They indicated um, your assignment on the uh, Major Crimes Homicide Unit. Uh, can you describe what particular incidents you would respond to during your assignment there, sir? We did all homicides, suicides, equivocal deaths, any kind of overdoses, anything the sheriff deemed necessary that his homicide unit would attend to, and any kind of shooting, stabbings, basically persons crimes, aggravated batteries and whatsoever. Detective Smith, I'm going to call your attention now to a particular incident at a particular date, the date being uh, February 13th, the year 2013. Um, sometime uh, after six o'clock in the morning, did you receive a call to respond to a particular area? I did by my sergeant Dan Bowling. Do you know about? I I don't recall exactly when, but it was somewhere between six and seven in the morning. And was it light out at that time, or still dark, if you recall? It was starting to get light out. When you uh, did you respond to the scene, sir? I did. About how long did it take you to get there? Mm, if I remember right, I was coming from home. It only takes maybe about fifteen minutes. When you arrived at the scene, uh, Detective, uh, were you the first person from the major case slash homicide unit there? I don't believe I was. I think my boss beat me. Did you, um, were you given some type of specialized assignment related to this investigation? I was assigned as a lead investigator on this one. What does that mean, sir? Uh, I am the lead detective. The case is mine, so everything comes to me, comes through me. Detective Smith, can you describe um, generally what you observed at, at the crime scene as far as uh, potential evidence and whether or not the crime scene was secure? Uh, the crime scene was secure. There were several deputies around. Crime scene tape was up. Um, I remember seeing a hat on the ground, some blood-like substance. I believe you just heard from Elizabeth, also um, shell casing. So you saw those items at the scene, sir? I did. And did you walk around the scene and were various items of evidence pointed out to you? They were, yes. And additionally, sir, did you also speak to the first responding officers, including a deputy named <coughs> Mac Davis? I did. 
And based upon that information, sir, did you also become aware that there were some civilian witnesses at the scene who had been interviewed? Yes. Um, calling your attention out to the um, victim of the incident or the, the injured party, um, did you become aware of what his name was? Eventually, yes, Alexander Bradley. What, if anything, did you do, Detective Smith, relative to Alexander Bradley? What, what was your understanding as to his location at that time, sir? When I was initially at the scene, he was at the hospital, and I was given information. I believe he was going to surgery. And Which hospital was that, sir? St. Mary's Hospital in West Palm Beach. Is that um, one of the major hospitals in the West Palm Beach area? It is. It's our major trauma center for the so, north end of the county. So have you been there on numerous um, occasions in the course of your career as a detective? Far too many. Yes. Um, at some point that day, this being uh, February 13, 2013, did you travel uh, to the um, St. Mary's Medical Center in an effort to see what Mr. Bradley's status was? I did, and he was in surgery at that time. Was he, uh, well, in surgery, I assume he was not conscious, is that right? No, no. And following uh, checking on Mr. Bradley, sir, did you become aware that he was going to survive his injuries? I did, yes. And calling your attention now to the very next day, Detective Smith being uh, February 14th, the year 2013, did you go to Mr. Bradley's hospital room? I did. And when you went to Mr. Bradley's hospital room, did you come equipped with some type of recording device? I did. I had a digital recorder with me. What was the purpose of that, Detective? To try to attempt to get a statement from him so I could further along the investigation. What was um, Mr. Bradley's uh, condition upon your arrival the next day, February 14th, 2013? He was awake and cognizant. I'd, I'd spoken to the staff just to see if there's any kind of possibility if he was on some heavy pain medication may not be able to get a very good statement out of him said he wasn't when I talked to him he seemed fine to your understanding sir and also not only your understanding as an investigating detective but also from your own observations of Mr. Bradley when you saw him in person on February 14th 2013 what was his um, condition or what was the nature of his um, injury sir he definitely had an injury to his his head I believe it was his right eye and I think there was one on his hand, I can't remember, I'm not sure. Now, from an investigative perspective, um, as a lead detective at that point, sir, was there any ballistic evidence that you were able to recover from the hospital uh, purportedly removed from Mr. Bradley? There was, there was a small piece of lead. And how, how, how small? It was just a little tiny piece. And based upon your observations of Mr. Bradley and your review of, of that particular evidence, um, do you know where the remainder of the projectile went? I do not. No, Did you observe at any point in the course of your investigation some photographs of um, Mr. Bradley, the right side of his head? I did, yes. <clears throat> when you observed the, uh, the photographs again, pursuant to your investigation of the right side of Mr. Bradley's uh, head, did you, did you observe anything that appeared to be holes? I did, yes. Air pressure, what's here? You may. <clears throat> Showing you a photograph, sir. Uh, do you recognize that? I do. Is yes, that sir. one of the photographs that you looked at pursuant to your investigation of the shooting of Alexander Bradley on February 13th, 2013? Yes, sir. And does that photograph show injuries that you saw? Uh, that Mr. Bradley had at the hospital when you visited him on February 14, 2013? Yes. And does that uh, photograph show what you described as a hole on the uh, right side of his, his head? Yes, sir. Can I offer the photograph to the next number two? You need a projection. No, sir. You need a received. <coughs> Now, Detective uh, Smith, you indicated that you um, had your recorder with you. Did you take a tape-recorded statement of Alexander Bradley from his hospital bed on February 14th, the year 2013? Yes, sir, I did. And that um, exhibit, uh, for the record, has already been entered in evidence. Um, is it fair to state, Mr. Uh, D Detective Smith, that Mr. Bradley was not particularly forthcoming uh, in that interview? He was not, no. Based upon that interview with Mr. Bradley on the 14th of February of the year 2013, what did you, you did you do next in your investigation? I 
pretty much put the case on the shelf because at that point he wasn't cooperative with my investigation. I had very little, if any, evidence at that point. And without a victim in the state of Florida, we don't have any kind of investigation at that time. Now, Detective, were you aware that, um, well, let me re rephrase that. Are you aware that clothing was secured from Mr. Bradley's person when he arrived at the hospital? I was, yes. In addition to clothing, Detective, did you become aware of whether or not he had any type of uh, bracelet on his wrist? I believe so, yes. It was one. And do you recall uh, what that bracelet said? Next level club, I believe. And what, if anything, did you do, Detective, related to next level club in an attempt to determine uh, the potential whereabouts of Mr. Bradley prior to his shooting? I researched a lot of the clubs within Palm Beach County and Broward County. I don't remember if I went as far south as Miami, um, but I never found anything in our immediate area to uh, indicate the next level club on anything that we had. And uh, Detective, just calling your attention to, uh, again, Mr. Bradley's status, as you've described, uh, the gunshot when you observed and the fact he had surgery. Are you aware of if he was treated for a number of days at St. Mary's Medical Center before being released? I believe so, yes. Dr. Smith, I'm showing you a, a, pay, a document that's 174 pages. Does this appear to be the medical records of Alexander Bradley based upon his treatment starting on February 13th, the year 2013, sir? It appears as such, yes, sir. Your Honor, I believe by agreement I offer the 174 page medical records subject to redaction. <laughs> I'll see you at sidebar. Oh, I have a I know you don't. Okay, first, you win, sir. You may. Smith, I'm going to show you a large board has a couple of more blown up maps. First of all, um, do you recognize the area depicted here, sir? I do. That is my county. Is this a fair and accurate representation of Palm Beach County, and in particular, um, the area of 3715 Fiscal Court in Riviera Beach, where you responded on February 13th, the year 2013? Yes, sir. And does this map also show, um, perspective-wise, where the city of Miami is in relation to Palm Beach County, as well as uh, Belgley? Yes, sir. Your Honor, for the board with the maps is the next number exhibit. All right, we'll mark that 336. No objection to that. Thank you. Now, Detective uh, Smith, just orienting you to the uh, board that was just marked as the next numbered exhibit, um, up to the top, is that where Palm Beach uh, County is, on the top of the diagram, sir? Yes, sir. And Miami's down uh, much further beyond that, is that correct? Correct, to the south. So I'll put on the screen here. A smaller version of that exhibit. <coughs> this area here, sir, does that show uh, Palm Beach County? It does. Yes, sir. And Miami is uh, down here. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, did you, you indicated, Detective, that you didn't check any of the clubs in Miami for that next level club? I don't recall if I went as far south as Miami for my search. As far as any processing that you ordered of the, of the clothing that was recovered from Mr. Bradley, did you order any type of testing or processing? As a I did not. Time? No, sir. What about the ballistic evidence that was recovered from the scene, Detective, particularly the uh, shell casing? It was processed by our firearms lab and it was entered into Niven. And what uh, kind of uh, caliber uh, shell casing was that, sir? I believe it was a 40 caliber. And from your uh, training experience, uh, a 40 caliber shell casing is fired from what type of weapon? A 40 caliber weapon. It can be a semi automatic. So not a revolver, a semi automatic? It's Correct. It's going to be a semi-automatic. I don't believe of any 40 caliber revolvers. Now, Detective, calling your attention now to where your investigation 
uh, proceeded after the initial few weeks. At, at some point, you indicated that it became an inactive case. Is that correct? Correct. Yes, sir. During the time that it was an inactive case, are you aware of whether or not there's any communication with Mr. Bradley related to the clothing? There was during my initial interview with him while I we were at the hospital. He indicated he wanted nothing to do with the investigation, didn't want to cooperate, didn't want prosecution. And he told me all he wanted was his ID back so he could get back onto the plane and fly home. So with that, he requested his items back. So I sent an email allowing the items to be released to him if he decided to come pick them up. And you're aware of what um, happened to uh, the clothing of Mr. Bradley? I believe he called or our evidence people called him wanted, somehow they got together and he wanted his items back i believe his clothes per se were soiled with a blood-like substance or blood and he decided he didn't want those so they went into our destruction bin now detective i'm calling your attention to sometime at around may of 2013. mr hagan you're moving on to a, oh, yeah. a different area the one that we've recessed now until 2 p.m 